Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pacharani, Nirvasesha Sunyavadi Paskachada Satarani, Shri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Dvaita Gadada, Shri Vasadi Guru Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So, when they churn the ocean of milk, you know the pastime. So many amazing things come out. And there was a, um, a darshan in Detroit. I was there. And this one man kept trying to get Prabhupada to talk about Radha and Krishna and the gopis. And then he wanted to hear something about different incarnations. And Prabhupada didn't want to go there. But the man kept pushing. And then finally Prabhupada said, this ISKCON movement is an incarnation of Krishna. And he's come again to save the world. So because we're close to it, we're thinking, oh, who cooked breakfast? And that guy snored all night long. We had a brahmachari who snored so loudly he used to wake himself up. I swear to you, that's pretty famous. That was a... Anyway, um, but the fact of the matter is that we are caught up in a wave of an ocean of mystical events that are the Hare Krishna movement. The fact that this prophet said this movement is going on by the mercy of Krishna alone. And then he paused, looked at us, and said, and that is a fact. So... There are so many. We have the ISKCON Global Property Division. You know, while most devotees are just playing in the hand of God, someone's got to keep an eye on the ball and, you know, administer this thing. That's also a very important service. So we have so many temples all over the world. Did you know one of the most materially mystic places in the world is the Incan capital that was only discovered in the 1930s or 40s. Dravida would know better. I mean, uh, Drudakarma would know that Machu Picchu up in the, Him uh, in the Andes. It's a remote place. Uh, when was it discovered? So something like that. Yeah, yeah. Hidden from the... We've got a temple and a restaurant there. Yeah. You know that the largest waterfall in Africa, I think it's Victoria Falls, or I forget what it is, big tourist area. We've got a preaching center and a restaurant there. I mean, it just, it's just, um, it, to keep track of all the things that are going on in ISKCON is practically impossible. We now have three devotees, Tapan Mishra, so many, very nice, intelligent, mature devotees, and uh, an assistance and a budget just to formulate a list of where all the temples are, how to contact them, just to keep track of everything. We've gotten to that point. So we have the little issues, and everybody's got a rock in their shoe, their thing they was, they're agitated about, or whatever it is. But when you actually step back and look at the thing, it's completely mystical. And just like Krishna says to Arjuna, that, you know, you can fight or not fight. If you fight, you get the credit. If you don't fight, it's going on anyway. What is it? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So the will of Krishna is going to happen. So I wanted to take just one. These were two things that came to my uh, email box, two events, as a, as a member of Iskand's governing body. And I thought, well, that's far out, blissful. And I was thinking that, you know, a lot of the devotees don't know this stuff. They just, you know, they, they know their local world and all glories to it, and maybe they back to Godhead or whatever, you know. But of course, everything's online nowadays. But I wanted to draw your attention to just one slice of a slice of something mystical coming from Srila Prabhupada. Because it is all, there's no question, it's all going on by the vision and energy of Srila Prabhupada, calling down the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Nityananda, and the previous Acharyas. So I thought I would share with you, because this is your movement. It's our movement. It, what is it?
It's just made, it, it consists of people. It's not like some government funded or what hired agent. It's going on by surrendered Vaishnavas who are putting their shoulder to the wheel and want to spread Lord Chaitanya's mercy. That's what this is. That's the heart. Prabhupada said the Hare Krishna movement. Movement means action. It means moving. It means expanding. So it's yours. This is what you are part of. This is what you're enabling. And we'll get to how you're enabling it directly in a moment. So hey, let's go. Is it, oh no. I'm there too. No, this is not, no, this is unacceptable. That's why I said make sure it runs beforehand. This is absolutely unacceptable. I know it, that's why, and it, I don't want to, don't get me started. I'm on the edge anyway. Um, so we do not accept the failure. It's just, we don't accept it. Didn't, can you reboot it? Well, this is very disappointing. After all that buildup. Oh, Krishna. Do we have an alternative? Anyone have a projector? An old school? They can project, have a projector and a computer? Oh, this is very disappointing. Anyone have a suggestion what we should do? Oh, you don't have a, nobody's got a screen? It looks so funky on the wall. It looks the color doesn't come out. The That's what I'm thinking we could show on that, but I, I just hate to take up everybody's time. I mean, I can tell some Prabhupada Leela from here in Los Angeles, but this is, this is special, it was something nice. Can we rewind, rewind time? Just push the rewind button and give time to, I don't, I don't know what to do if it's not my house. No, because he couldn't start it yesterday. Um, just as a, as, as a sidelight, you always make sure it's on the screen before you start. And I told him, don't wait till the last, you never wait till the last minute. So our al the only alternative is, is that we, um, we get a screen or we show it on this, but we need your projector and a computer. And we, he's, got the, he's got it on a pin drive. No, but Govardhan, you know, he's senior and elderly. How do you, how do you, you know, go quickly? Can you go quickly? I, I mean, I, I don't mean to make Druda karma go quickly. I guess in the interim, we should say something. Hold on. One takeaway is never depend on the material nature. Well, I'll tell some, because I was thinking about it anyway. The temple, I first came to the temple in 1969. And yeah, summer of 1969, it was over here on Watsika. And I walked in late to Prabhupada's lecture. <laughs> Everybody's thinking about him. Um, and the first thing I heard Prabhupada say, we have so many do-nuts. And I thought, donuts. I thought he was talking about the Sunday feast. And you know, Although, uh, what is it, true confessions of a sannyasi? I love sweets. I absolutely love sweets. Thus, I have diabetes, so 
material nature has its limits. So, um, and everything in those days, everything baked had eggs in it. So I had to give up donuts. You know, they, they were out the door. And when Prabhupada, he, oh, hey guys, he's going to play around with this for hours and don't expect it to come back to life. So they just pretend, don't pay any attention to the man behind that curtain. Just Let's just talk about Prabhupada and focus because it's not, when it happens, it happens. I know it's easier said than done. You want to know something about, anyway. Well, I'll just say it because I started about controlling the mind. I'll get back to the donuts in a minute, but I'm just trying to deal with this thing which is going to distract everybody for the whole time. Um, the idea that we can, can meditate on nothing and merge into the white light, let me tell you something about controlling the mind. Do not think, let's do a little thought exercise, do not think about the color red. Don't think about the color red. How's that going for you guys? How's it working out? Red, 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 you know? So uh, it's hard to, the, 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 you, the only way you can meditate is by filling that with something. Red, red, red. Don't think about the color blue. Wait, what's in your head? Red's gone, blue's there. So the whole science is to how to fix one's mind on Krishna. And then that's it. It's by activity. So back to the do nuts, because that, that's the point. So I thought, fantastic. I said, Krishna consciousness, chanting, dancing, philosophy, and donuts. Sign me up, man. I'm in. And then I listened. And what anyone know what Prabhupada was actually saying? We have so many do nots. Prabhupada said we don't do that. Prabhupada said we are practically 90% no. It's in any yoga process, Prabhupada said there's yama and niyama. That you do this and you don't do that. So that was a little, one of my first awakenings in Krishna consciousness. It's all, not all play. You have to actually work hard. Tamal Krishnamash told me that Prabhupada used to speak, he used to give the Sunday feast talk, and I'll, I just thought of a story about that. But the, um, afterwards he would take his prasadam in a little um, side room. This is the old temple in, in La Cienega. And he... Um, he would sit on a low seat and then the devotees would sit around him on a circle. And he would take a little bit of some, like a bite of a samosa and distribute or a little bit of rye. He would distribute to the devotees, maha maha prasadam. And he'd take a nibble out of a gulab jamun and then he'd put it on Tamal Krishnamarsh's plate. So Tamal Krishnamarsh, believe it or not, he was a young brahmacharya at one point in time. Prabhupada said, young man means hungry. So, you know, he finished off one plate and then he very reverentially transferred it to a second plate, went through the second plate, very reverentially transferred it to his third plate. It was on his third plate of the Sunday feast. And he was here, I mean, Prabhupada was here, he was sitting next to Prabhupada, and next to him was a devotee named Jai Gopal, who's left his body some years ago. But Jai Gopal was a famous, infamous prashadam hound. He'd come out of the grave for the love drum. So, Kamal Krishna told me that he was looking at Srila Prabhupada's ear. He was meditating on how Prabhupada's ear was beautiful and long like Buddha's. And then he was thinking, actually, it's just perfect. It's, it's a transcendental, you know, radar dish for trans, you know, catching Shabda Brahman, you know, transcending the, from the, you know, the spiritual world. So he was, m these different blissful meditations on Prabhupada's ear. And when he was distracted, looking this way at Prabhupada's ear, Jai Gopal reached over, grabbed the glove jamun that Prabhupada had given Tamal, and popped it in his mouth. Tamal, he told me this personally, reached over, grabbed the guy, and was ready to whack him. Prabhupada, seeing this going on, said, you know, what, did he, what happened? What happened? Tamal said, he stole my glove jamun. He stole my glove jamun. Oh, first Tamal said, he said, can I hit him, Prabhupada? Can I hit him? He had the wherewithal to control his senses. That He asked Prabhupada, can I hit him? Prabhupada said, what did he do? And he said, he stole my gulab jamun. Prabhupada said, ah, Vaikuntha qualifications. 
Also, the Sunday feast, there was a, um, we were getting some college students from Caltech. Caltech is one of the top hard sciences. I mean, MIT trembles before Caltech, or it's certainly the West Coast equivalent of Caltech. So we're getting some nice kids coming, you know, nice students. And evidently they'd gone back. It was like with Prakasananda Saraswati and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They'd gone back and said, oh, we've met this Indian sage, sadhu, and he's saying such nice philosophy. And they have a famous Sanskrit, uh, Sanskrit at least they did in the 70s, Sanskrit department there at Caltech. So there's ca their professor thought, well, we're going to teach them a lesson. He came down to... Sh the professor came with his students to debunk, deflate their appreciation for Prabhupada, that Prabhupada was just a sentimentalist. And he stood up, when the Prabhupada asked for questions and answers, he stood up and he said, this is just sentimentality. And, you know, Rig Veda says this, Sam Veda says this, Yajur Veda says this, this is not Upashanic, uh, from the Upash Upanishads, this is just sentiment from the, you know, uh, Bhagwat Purana, uh, from the, yeah, from the, from the Mahabharat, which is the fifth Purana and all that. You know, just the typical thing they say. Prabhupada wouldn't even look at him. Prabhupada just was chanting Japa, just looking at the deities, why this guy went on. He slowed down, Prabhupada said, are you finished? Then he had something more to say. A little, you know, until then he finally ran out of steam. And Prabhupada turned and he was just like a lion. It was like seeing a, a pile driver. Because his whole point was this is sentiment. It's not supported by the, you know, the, the Acharyas, Ramanuja Acharya, Madhavacharya. It's not supported by the, by, by the Upanishads and Vedanta Sutra. Without mentioning Bhagavad Gita once, without quoting from the Bhagavatam, this stream of verses came out. I was just a guest and I was watching this thing. It was so intense. Hey, way to go. But the thing is we wanted presentation one. That's why this is called present. Now, I'm not going to rock the boat. Can we get presentation two? I mean, pres this is presentation two. We wanted to go with presentation one. But just to finish, thank you. Whoever the miracle worker is, I'm deeply in your debt. Go to, to the rescue. So, okay, Fent, now we need to get it set so we can see the whole thing. I mean, I'm not going to, there we go, man. Okay, so just to finish this story. So this guy was so arrogant, top Sanskrit professor in Caltech, which is one of the best in the world, coming to be debunk this sentimentalist Srila Prabhupada and these fanatic Hare Krishnas, because they, maybe they've got a few verses from Bhagavad Gita, Tushanti Chara, Ramanti Chara, so whatever, you know. And Prabhupada just turned on this man, it wasn't anger, but it was just such power. This Upanishad, this, you know, from the Rig Veda, from Madhvacharya, from Ramanujacharya, from Vedanta Sutra. And he just was pounding the guy. It was just like he was standing. The guy was standing. Then he was kind of stooped. Then he's like, like you ever seen a boxer and he knows, wait a minute, I'm in over my head here. You could just, then the guy was sitting. And if he could have melted into the floor, Prabhupada just mopped the floor with the guy. And then Prabhupada said, anything else? And this man raised his hand and said, Swamiji, can we have kirtan? Which means he accepted defeat. He was at, all right. This is, so that was a few Prabhupada pastimes. So the re, what this is, is Maya Prachandra Diamandir is our world headquarters. Of course, we know that our Western world headquarters is New Dwarkadam. And Prabhupada said, I mean, the, how many times, you know, where do you want to look? Do a word search on it. Um, but ISKCON, what's happened is the government, uh, the Indian government has, a, I got to turn more, I apologize. Um, they're give, it's part of the effort of the Indian government to clean up and beautify the Ganga. There's a devotee named Yudhisthir Govinda. He's an unsung hero. He's, a, he's probably, he's second generation and a very nice devotee. And he's the communications director for India. And he's made friends. And Gopal Krishnamaj, when he meets Modi, the, the prime minister, they're like old friends. They hold hands when they're walking, you know. 
So by those connections cultivated for who knows how long, the government has given a grant for building a bathing ghat in Mayapur. Now here's the picture. Let's go next. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's designed to accommodate the projected volume of tourists and pilgrims to come at Iskand Mayapur. Next. So this is... And the government's paying for it. And it's... Well, that, there we go. So you can... Here's... What's up with this? It doesn't work on the screen. Today is not Tech Monday. Don't worry about it. You can see the bathing ghat. And it, it consists of... Well, and you can see my appropriate Chandra Mandir in the back. There's going to be that blank spot, which you, Oh, please work with me. Okay, fine. Um, that they're going to build a Ganga Mata temple, a small temple with a deity of Mother Ganga. Um, you can see the steps. There's a, there's a, they're going to bring boats up from Mayapur. They can dock here. Give me the next one. What's the next thing? Next slide. Yeah, uh, the grant, close to $2 million. They'll build the entire ghat, which includes bathing steps, green space, changing rooms, office, gazebos, lighting, railing, and walkway. The Ganga Mata temple will be built by ISKCON. The construction is set to start in June. That's like in a couple days. The money's already set aside. And it'll take 18 months to complete, provided the weather and water levels, you know, there's some things they can't control. But that's happening in Mayapur. Next. These are the government ministers at the inauguration. They had a big fire jug out of a big hoven to actually uh, start the thing. This is in Mayapur. Next. Now, I just wanted to... I don't, my laser pointer does somehow or other it doesn't work on this screen what? no wave goodbye watch it's on the wall uh, anyway you must have a maybe it's my eyes see the top left corner if you can see that that's the hut that prop when we had that land there was nothing on that land some of God, his prophet's god brothers had actually gone to and schemed with the local Muslim farmers don't sell ISKCON land. I mean, it was, the prophet tried several times. Tamal Kershamash had to go out there with all the money disguised. It, it, it took a pair of Brahmin under and prophet showed him how to make a money belt out of it to go out there with the U.S. dollars to pay for the thing. It was unbelievable espionage we got this land. First thing they built was this little straw hut. Tamal Kershamash told me this. And when they drove out from Mayapur, Prabhupada, they had the, the small, well not small, but they're out this big, the Utsav Radhamadava. So the roof on that little thing on the top there, it leaked. And half it leaked. So Prabhupada, this is a Vaishnava, immediately put the deities on the side that did not leak, put a curtain up, and then he and Tamal slept on the other side, the side that leaked. Tamal said when he got up in the morning after the first day, Prabhupada said, you snore. Tamal said, I don't snore. Prabhupada said, how do you know? You were sleeping. Tamal said, he's got a point, you know. <laughs> I didn't, don't know. But from that, that little, those of you who've been to Mayapur and know Mayapur, it's just worthwhile to think. Because there's so many problems. There's always, you know, it's the nature of this place. But if you think of where we were and where we are now, and if we just chant you know, stay true to the philosophy and the sadhana and the service. It'll, we'll get over all, whatever it is. Nothing, Prabhupada said nothing can defeat this movement from inside, from outside. Nothing can defeat it from outside. It can only be defeated by inside. If we fight with each other, we fall down, we, you know, you know I don't know what. There's so many stupid things you can do. But, so that the, the, was that little straw hut where Prabhupada stayed. Then the next thing that happened, you, if, if you know Mayapur now, it's a, beaming, uh, a booming metropolis. All that there was was that conch building. That's the bottom left. I mean, sorry, Lotus building. That was the only building. The rest was rice fields. When we first, the, I went to Mayapur in 1973, and it was the first time there was an international. Devotees came from all over the world. All the devotees in Canada, all the devotees in South America, all the devotees in the U.S., they flew to New York City. We all got on a, it was, we chartered, Mahendra, chartered an Air India jumbo jet. Then we landed in London and all the devotees in Europe had flown, and Africa had flown up and joined us in London. And we filled up a whole 
seven, whatever it was, jumbo jet. We had kirtan on a plane going up and down the aisles. The pilot had to get on. Anyone who was on the trip will remember. The pilot had to get and say, Hare Krishna, please stop dancing. I'm having trouble flying the plane. You know, all the devotees are on one side, all the other, you can imagine, you know. The devotee, anyway, I don't want to, because we don't have much time. But it was in a mystical thing. And when we finally were driving up from Calcutta to Mayapur, there was nothing out there. It was just rice field. There were some Gaudiya Mat old temples. There was, of course, the, the, the headquarters of by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. But you could hear a radio. We were, just as the sun was setting, we were arriving. There was about six or seven buses. And you could, t you could hear out the window if somebody was playing a radio. You could hear it from a couple miles away. And as we got close to Mayapur Chandradaya Mandir, the rising moon of, you know, Mayapur, we could hear the kirtan. We could, you couldn't see the prop, but you could hear. And as we got closer and closer, the kirtan got louder. And that was inside that, that the, the temple was at the bottom of the conch building. Um, yeah, if you, if, you, if you juggle it, it completely distracts me. Because I was going to say something else. Anyway, let's go to the next. So that just gives you a flavor. Now, why is it upside down? What David have I offended? <laughs> Something. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We'll stick with a picture better than that. Okay, go, 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 go. Weird. Go to the next one. How is that possible that the picture is upside down? Anyway, we're just going to roll on. This gives you an example of the detail work. Just picture nothing. Straw hut. Then picture conch building, I mean lotus building. When we stayed there, it wasn't even finished. The it was just cement. On the, and the temple room was finished. It's where everybody was covered with mosquito bites. Uh, everybody got the Bombay Blues, Mahatma Gandhi weight loss program. You know, everybody, everyone got sick as could be. They're covered with mosquito bites. I mean, it was tough. It was, it was tough. There's a morning walk during that 1973 and Prabhupada says on that morning walk, devotees don't suffer. There's a long pause while the devotees are processing. The, all we had for prasadam, the rice was cooked like a lump. You know how it, you get all its starch and it just merges? It was crunchy on top. The grains hadn't cooked. It was completely merged like starch. You couldn't see the individual grains. You get a lump of this. And the bottom was burnt. I don't even know how you do that. You know, so boom. Then you get, there was a cup of dal, completely, no vegetables, completely watery, and so hot with spices, it just went right through you. And a few burnt chapatis. And then for dessert, there was gore. You know, a big, uh, uh, you know. And it was covered with black flies. They'd wave it off and they break off a little piece. I mean, it was, it was tough. And we didn't know how to live in India. Nothing goes out in the noonday sun but a mad dog and an Englishman. We were out there chanting, and the, you know, and the locals would just sit in the shade and count. One, two, three, four or five hours. We had heat stroke. I went to bed at... I got heat stroke after chanting all the way down Bhakti Siddhanta Mark to Lord Chaitanya's birthplace. And then I did the foolish things. I got back. First thing, it was glug, 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 drank a ton of water. So I don't feel so good. I lay down. I woke up. It looked like I felt much better. It was a couple hours later, according to the sun. I'd been completely knocked out for 24 hours. I asked the devotees. I said, I could have died. They said, oh, you were breathing. You know? <laughs> All glories to the Vaishnavas. So uh, the reason I mention that is that we stand... Of course, we take the dust from is a better analogy. But we stand on the shoulder of giants, men and women who joined this Hare Krishna movement and gave, as far as physical ability, the best years of their life to build this movement. We should always remember that. And we should remember, start in a little straw hut, start out in a grass field with nothing, you know? So these are just some shots of... And the other one is sideways. This is completely mystical. Anyway, that's the, the Mayapur Chandra Mandir. That's an artistic rendering, but you, you go back to the actual photos. Let's say I think this is all Photoshop. Keep going, keep going. Back, 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 back. But it's upside down. Anyway, 
Stand on your head and you'll get an idea. That building actually exists. It's happening, okay? So let's go on to the presentation too and see what surprises we have there. Okay, so now Druda Karma knows this, but this is a report from the Temple of the Vedic Planetarium. And it came to GBC's, and I thought, I should share this with the devotees. And it's, we're building this beautiful building. And you see the three arches, three domes. Under the main dome, that will be the Sampradaya, Srila Prabhupada and, and our Sampradaya. Then you have Panchatattva, a beautiful Panchatattva, and the, the big, you know, uh, Panchatattva. And then next to that, you have Radha, um, Madhava and the gopis. On the right, the dome, on the smaller dome on the right, that is for Lord Nishingadev. Prabhupada said he should have his own temple. He's fiery. He's, ooh, it's like a nuclear reactor to keep the heat in there, you know. Ugra Nishinga. And on the far left, that will be a Vedic planetarium. Now what goes in that? It's a beautiful building. It's a wonderful experience. But like when Prabhupada went to Tirupati, they asked, Prabhupada was very impressed. There's a, there's a VIP book. You can put your comments in it. Prabhupada wrote after getting the darshan of Balaji, Venkat, you know, Srinivas Govinda. Prabhupada's comment was very spiritual. That was Prabhupada's comment. So, uh, but they asked him, saintly, pious, Vaish, humble Vaishnavas, do you have any advice for us? Prabhupada said, your worship, your standard of maintenance, I want to send my people to learn from you. But they were nice. And they said, but there must be something more. And Prabhupada said, the only thing is you are not spreading the message of Balaji. You're worshiping Balaji. And you're taking care of the pilgrims. But where is the philosophy? Where is the... Because if they don't have philosophy, it just becomes sentiment. Well, my grandmother did it, so I'm doing it. Or I, you know, what, I give a box of bananas and I'll get my weight back and gold or whatever, you know. So there has to be philosophy. And people are thoughtful. Why are all the churches, you know, becoming empty? Why are they, you know, because they want, people want to know why. How does it work? So, this is a presentation made to the GPC about the Temple of the Vedic Planetarium. But actually, well, I guess I'll just say it because there was some more to that. Prabhupada said as a setup, well, I need a clock. I can't read your watch. Does anyone have a, oh, that'll work. And we go to when? Almost over, but uh, well, then nah, you don't want to do that. Um, Prabhupada said, "Well, let me say this first. What is the mission of the Hare Krishna movement? Yeah, we want to distribute books. We want to make devotees, and we're thinking about what does it say? Think, think globally, act locally. So we want to maintain. We're servants of Rukmini Dwarkadish." And we want to maintain them nice and spread their glories. And it, yeah, definitely. We want people to come and be able to worship Radha uh, Kunja Bihari. I'm <laughs> Rukmini Dorkadish, sorry about that. Wherever you are, it's appropriate. But Prabhupada said, my disease is I cannot think small. I, I'll say this before I forget. The North American BBT gives, there's the North European BBT, there's the Australian, or what do they call it, the Pacific, what do they call that, South Pacific BBT, there's the Far East BBT, there's the Mediterranean BBT, there's, you know, and there's the North American BBT. And, you know, we're always seeing that India, they're doing, and all glories to their service, don't get me wrong, but of all the BBTs, BBT divisions, that's where, you know, the sale of the books, all the money goes there to pay for the cost of the books. It was probably Prabhupada's formula. There's a percentage that's set aside for the construction fund. And that can, temples all over North America were purchased by loans from the BBT for the, for the, for the down payment or they stood behind, they guaranteed loans. That's how these temples, that's how San Diego, that's how Laguna, that's how Denver, I don't know where else, we can just go down the list. They were purchased from the profit from the sale of, of Prabhupada's books. We used to say, and for the last, I don't know how many years, the majority of that money has gone for building the TOVP. And the North American BBT 
is given the largest amount by far, far of way, way above India. So we used to say that every book is a brick for Mayapur, and it's true. So the devotees going out and distributing books are building this TOVP. It's your building. So I, I wanted to say a little, I want to explain what's in it, but I want you to first understand that's how this building is coming up. It's coming up by book distribution, which rests on the hard work of the Sankirtan devotees. Now Prabhupada, quoting Napoleon, said an army runs on its stomach. They're not going to go out and work hard all day if they don't get nice prashadam. And if they don't have a blissful kirtan and see Rukmini Dwargadis, Jagnambali, Gornitai, they're not going to be enlivened. So it all works together. The American, the Allies beat the Germans only because of logistic and supplies. We just wore them out. I mean, there was bravery. I don't want to get lost in history. But the actual fact is they just ran out of supplies. They ran out of gas. They didn't have the tanks. They didn't have, you know, America's pumping out the planes. And, this, and so the supply system supports the tip of the spear, the tip of the spear being the actual people on the front line. So I'm not, you know, without the support system, you don't have the devotees out there, but you also need the devotees out there. And just one sliver, in addition to saving the conditioned souls, we're going to talk about that during the... Because Swava sent me this, this pictures that you've sent him of people you purchased books and also little video clips, people getting the books. I mean, I was just, I couldn't believe it. I'm sending that all over the world because it's just mystical and wonderful. But you should also understand another byproduct of that book distribution is we're building this temple. Now, why does this temple matter? And why is it called the Vedic T Planetarium, Temple of Vedic Planetarium? We, what is our mission? Our prophet said, my disease is I cannot think small. Build a temple, install some deities, ring the bell, and you get enough money to support yourself. Okay, fine, great. You know, distribute a set. Fantastic. But Prabhupada, that and more, he said, I cannot think small. Point I'm trying to make, have you ever seen three, three buildings? One, two, three. And they want to demolish the building in the middle and create something new? You ever, you all seen that, you know? When the thing just, shh. You seen that? The, it, it, it collapses on its own weight. You know how they do that? There's a, kids don't try this at home. But they have a structural engineer and they figure out the linchpins, the, the key points in that, like you've always got a you know, support wall, you've got, you know, whatever it is. So supporting that big structure, there's the foundation, but there's also linchpins along, there's structural stress points that hold that structure together. You blow out those linchpins and then the whole thing just collapses on its own. Prabhupada wanted to change the world view. He came, sent by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, with Sena Pata Bhakta, and we are his assistants to change the world. Okay, that's nice hyperbole. Son. No, it happens all the time. Not all the time, but it happens. World views change. There was the age of fate. They thought hell was below, the earth was flat, heaven was above. And there's the, earth, you know, the age of enlightenment where well, everything's me mechanistic and we can figure out how to control it all. There was the, age, you know, the, the industrial age where we'll fix it all with big machines and what are we going to do with our spare time? Worldviews change. And worldview based on values, based on what, so many things. Prabhupada said that the materialist, the, the atmosphere we're living in, this what drives people, which creates this ugra karmic world that we live in, is Darwin. You know, we evolved from monkeys. Prabhupada said, maybe you evolved from monkeys. And then Prabhupada said, what the, where's the evolution? You're still monkeys, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> you judge by activity. And then Prabhupada said, the, the missing link, Prabhupada was on a roll. Prabhupada said, the missing link is my foot in your face. <laughs> and we've got Drew to Karma. The, I tell you, this man... I would say worth his weight in gold, but that doesn't even touch it. The work that he's done, because Prophet wanted that. He knew that people are innocent and they're being fed this garbage, they're being fed this worldview. And if you blow it out, 
that, you know, chemical evolution, life came from, you know, prebiotic soup or whatever. Where'd, they, where'd the soup come from? Where'd, I mean, there's so many ways. It all came from a singularity. That guy at MIT or wherever he was says, give me one free miracle. I'll explain the rest. Okay, like probably said, okay, where'd the chunk come from? And they've got a theory. They've got a singular, that everything came from, a, a singularity is a point so intense, so dense, so minute, you know, and all things came out of it. I mean, spare me. Show me the math. Well, that's what he says. Give me one free miracle. I'll explain the rest. They have no idea how. There's so many points. There's a point. Oh, there's another point. Why aren't universes coming out of that? I mean, so that life comes from chemicals. We evolved from monkeys. There's a whole series of, you know, different, I don't I go to each one, but, but Prabhupada said you blow those out. That consciousness is brain function. There's no real soul. There's no, you know, entity. There's no non-materialistic. It's just brain. It's just C fibers firing. It's synapses. It's chemicals. That's all. So all of those different concepts are supporting this material construct. And Prabhupada said, no way. You know, he came to blow that out. And you blow those out and the worldview changes. Its structure collapses. And it's happened. It's not hyperbole. It's not wishful thinking. It regularly happens. Every couple hundred years, the worldview changes. And that's Prabhupada said, I cannot think small. That is our mission. Our mission is to change the world. We're not meant for small things. And what more, I mean, just, you know, if they could get their butt back from Walmart without getting mugged and pay the gas, that's success? That's human life? So, this is what's inside the Vedic planetarium. It is, they have um, in Delhi, Satnagar, I forget the name of that. It's not changing bodies, but they have that expo you can go through. It's there, it's the mu Vedic Museum. And it shows, according to karma, you get a particular body. You know, it shows, you know, the hellish planets. It's got some far out stuff in there. After people go through it, they had to put a couple benches in the exterior room because their minds were blown. They just like, they had to sit there. They had people like, where to sit? People passing out, you know? Not because of the heat, just because it completely rocked their boat. So this is designed so that people walk in the door completely convinced of that materialistic worldview and walk out seeing Radha Madhava, Gornitai, the Panchatattva, uh, thinking Vedic Pramana is the real evidence, this is the real truth, I'm not this body, this is the goal of life, and I should get out of here and go back to Godhead. It's just like a machine. They go in it, shh, like you have those quarters, sh sh you know, your coins, and you put it and you shake it, and the quarters come out at the end. That's what this thing is designed for, and that was Prabhupada's vision. So next, uh, yeah, just skip past this because that was all sound. So hey, hang on, back up. So these are the different um, exhibits. That's what's inside that building. That's what the money from book distribution is achieving with North America leaving, leading to fill this building with unbelievable faith. You go to the Mormon temple, you go through and they got their whole history and it's got, it's got some moving stuff, you know. But we've got actual substance. We don't just have sentiment. We've got, you know, Jesus coming. It looks like a vacuum bar, you know, whatever. We've got the real thing. So, next. Um, next. Okay, so it, it, it does it. Go back. I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. Um, Prabhupada's journey and the sages of Naimasharanya. So it gives a setup. Who's Srila Prabhupada? What's the world that we're in? What's the origin of the Bhagavatam? What's the storyline? What's the philosophy? Where is this knowledge coming from? It sets them up. Next. Um, limitations of the senses. Okay, you think you know it. Everything you know is wrong, frankly. And that's, a, that's an interesting point to try to get people to move from. But Prabhupada said, you can't see what's on the other side of the wall. You don't remember what you did yesterday. I mean, there's so many examples. Parker observed, well, 
I got to think about time. Okay, so um, acquiring perfect knowledge. There's a morphing wall where you, the morphing wall sees people, you can age, is that how that works? You see yourself, you are here, and then you see yourself in the walker, you know, and then death hauling you off the stage. Okay, next. We're going to go through this quickly. Um, changing bodies, reincarnation, sages see with equal vision. Next. So now we're on the second floor of Druda Karma, our hero. Next. Go up. So here's a few examples. Uh, introduction to evolution, some faults in modern evolutionary theory, secondary creation. You know, how does it actually, it doesn't evolve, it devolves from the complex to the simple. They got it completely backwards. And we can prove it. Enough, at least we can rattle their cage that you're, this, what you think is not accurate. Next. So here, you can understand this because Druda Karma gives classes here, but the whole evolution, and then you find that rock of coal in South Africa that's got a bell in it or what, that's a million years old, and whoop. That blows the whole theory. Okay, next. So this is next. Keep going. I'm sorry, Prabhu. Um, this explains the Garbha Dakshai Vishnu, Maha Vishnu, Shira Dakshai Vishnu. It describes the higher, you know, the 14 planetary systems. Okay, if not that, if I say, this is not such a Dhanoi Prabhu. No. Yeah, exactly. Well, then who is? Oh, there he is. So if you, if, you know, okay, you blow this out, then you have to, what is the answer? What is this? So, so that's systematically, we blow out the structure and then we replace it. So this is all about the universe. Now, and there'll be a model, it's all moving, you can walk through it. It aligns, we'll keep going. So it's using Surya Siddhanta. This is a whole thing, this is, I mean, to understand this thing, Brahma's got four heads just to manage the thing. So the fifth canto, let me ask you a question. When you read the fifth canto, and you say, well, I don't understand that. Well, that doesn't make any sense. You know, rivers of, what is it? Mango juice falls down on the banks, it becomes gold. I mean, oh, what? Should a fifth grader, when I was in fifth grade, might have even been fourth grade, I took advanced science and I made a model of the universe. We all did, it was our project. We had little styrofoam balls. We paint them different color. I'm Pluto was, gr was purple, I think. Earth was green and blue. We painted and we put it on little strings and the sun was in the middle, yellow, yellow ball, and you could turn the thing and all the planets moved. I understood the solar system. Now, is it reasonable that a... F How old are you in fifth grade? Are you 12? 10? Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. So you're 10 years old. You, a 10-year-old child who can't find his way out of a you know, phone booth is going to understand the universe? And if he doesn't understand it, it's not true? The, the universe should become... Just like if an ant crawls across this floor, he has no idea that a class is going on and we're all talking. He has no idea. He'll, he'll report back to the colony, oh, I traveled a whole distance, but it was un, 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 uninhabited. He could be crawling on me. Uninhabited. So we are ants. Be real. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that the first step in knowledge is humility. And Prabhupada says in the purport, it's the key that opens the door. Without humility, you know, and man is the measure of all things. Why? It's ridiculous. Okay, it's arrogant. It's profoundly arrogant. So this explain. we'll go through this quickly because of the time. Just breeze through. Next. You know, Mount Sumeru, but it all will, the, the Vedic model that we'll be presenting will explain all the phenomena that we experience to be a legitimate, astronomical, cosmic understanding. You've got to explain eclipses. You've got to explain the seasons. There's things you have to explain, not the movements of the planets. This will, someone can walk in you know, an astronomer from, I don't know where it is. Don't they have the, is that telescope still up here that they, Griffith Park? Yeah, they can walk in there. And we will be able to show everything that they show mathematically pans out, but it's according to the Vedic view. view. 
So next, we're going to breeze through these, just so you have an idea. Uh, presentation of the universe, okay, it's experienced by different living entities. Prabhupada said, like, if you have a diamond, you turn it, it catches the light differently. According to the angle you see it, you see, if I'm at the bottom of a hill looking up, all I see is a few bushes and trees. I can't see more than 15 feet in front of me. If I'm at the top of the hill looking down, I can see the whole thing. You say, no, no, go left, go right. Watch out, there's cactus over there. Come this. You know, so from different vantage points, you see the thing differently. We see time incrementally moving. If you're on the heavenly planets and you happen to look down at the earth, things are spinning. It's just like a, you put the fast forward on the film. It's a blur because they're different time factors. So if you consider different angles, what to speak if you get into multi-dimensions? Multi-dimensions? I'll be quick. I'm going to meet uh, Sachidanoi Prabhu. We're going to meet downtown the corner of 5th and Grand. The corner. This comes from Sadaputta. We're gonna, and it's in Origins Magazine, which every devotee should read and every devotee should distribute. We're on the corner of 5th and Grand, right? We're going to meet tomorrow, 8 o'clock a.m., southwest corner. Pretty clear, isn't it? Such a noise, a saintly person. He's there early. Stands around, no Swami. You know, he's, he's got books to distribute. He's got, he's got stuff to do. So he goes, he leaves, right? Waits, supposed to meet at 8 o'clock. He waits till 8.20. I mean, come on, you know. Vaishnavas don't waste time. So he goes. He gets back to the temple and here's the agitated Swami. Hey, hey. I wouldn't do that, of course, because he's the saint. But, you know, where were you? He says, you know, Maharaj, I was there. I was standing on the corner. I was there early and I stayed 15 minutes late. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I apologize, but I didn't see you. Now, how is it possible that he and I were both there at the same time, exact same place? One devotee was pretty intelligent. said, oh, well, you're there, but you're looking in different directions. No, no, we, you know, 360 view, and we didn't see each other. How is it possible? And both with 20-20 vision. I've heard them all. How is it possible? Yes, my, yeah, exactly. If you add another dimension on, on, the, on, on length and width, two dimensions, we're in one place. You add the dimension of height, all of a sudden, he's on the ground floor, I'm on the fifth floor, we don't even see each other. There's no interaction. And they've got, the, you, you, you put in the, the, the dimension of time, so they're up to th four dimensions. And I think in modern physics, how many dimensions are they up to now? I mean, they're way out there. Acceptical, accepted theory, physical, you know, laws of physics. What do you want to know? Physics. So the point is that we live in a multidimensional universe. It's just as simple as that. How do you think they bathe in one place and come up at the Ganga? You know, how, how, how does that happen? How are they traveling on the rays of the sun? This is not just wishful thinking or, you know, Alice in Wonderland. If you know the science and you know the dimensions... Here's another simple one. I hold up my phone. We're all sitting here. We're talking. I'll be done in a few minutes. Breakfast, don't worry. But if I have my phone, I can go shopping on Amazon. Right here. I can go to ESPN or whatever. I can be watching a, a football game. I can, I can be you know, checking out Facebook. I can, be do, I can be doing whatever I'm doing. Right now, in this room, are multi-dimensions and multi-realities right in this room. I can stream a movie. It's all, it's all here. Anyone deny that that can be done? Have I said anything beyond the pale of logic? But what do you need? Just got the right device. Wi-Fi connection. It's all, it's all here. We don't even see it. But if you have the right device, you can access it. If you have the right level of consciousness... There's all kinds of dimensions in the universe. It's not, it's profoundly logical. So that's what this is explaining. Next. Anyway, this is the, I think we can keep going. This is the same principle. Let's keep going. Just because of the time factor. Keep going. Uh, is this from the letter? Somebody can read this. Is the other one text? Go back. Is the other one text? Okay. No, that's not... I'm sorry, I didn't mean text. It's, this, go up. These are from two letters by Srila Prabhupada. When Prabhupada conceived this, the importance of the TOVP, this Vedic explanation of existence, he gave him an order. 
So this is, somebody can read that? I, I think actually I better, thank you, you got a good voice, but I should read it for the mic, I should read it for the voice. Modern scientific calculations are subject to one change after another, and therefore they're uncertain. Do you know that the, 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 every 10 years, they have to throw out all the old textbooks and reprint them, those that are hard science? Yeah, they, 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 there's a big, you know, that's just, it's always changing. They, well, we're learning, we're growing, we've conquered new frontiers. You can perfume a dead rat any way you want. You know, if you keep changing, it means you don't know. We're groping. And one other thing, Sadaputta's example. Well, knowledge is cumulative. It's, it's, you know, one generation knew this and the next generation knew, hey, you know, we're growing. So if we keep growing and expanding and, and, the, and the storehouse of knowledge increases, eventually we'll know everything. Or we'll certainly know most things. Because we're improving. Let me give you an example. I forget what it is, but in the first modern Olympics, the pole vault... You can come up and take darshan if you want. Hello? If they want to go around, they can go around. Anyway, I, whatever. Um... I think it was 14 feet. You know, pole vaulting in the Olympic, boing. You know, they'll come back as some kind of frog or something. <laughs> They're going to be in their next life. And now the record is, anybody know? It's like 19 feet, 19, 20 feet. I mean, that's a major increase. They got better poles, Ajax springs. I don't know what they got going on. But, but you know, so okay, there's proof that by accumulation over time, they've pushed back the borders of accomplishment. Right? So why can't we do the same thing in knowledge? We'll just keep learning more every generation of it and eventually we'll accumulate it and we'll understand the secrets of the universe. Sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, sign me up. Does anyone in this room think, accepting the incremental increases of pole vaulting, anyone ever going to be able to pole vault to the moon? Hmm? What do you think? Is that going to happen? It's limits. It's, it's, incrementally you can move to a certain point. That it just other laws of physics counter it. You can't do it. And the whole world is limited like that. The idea that we're going to unravel and figure out everything by our senses is so profoundly foolish and arrogant. Yeah, you can, you can make a microphone. You can make, you know... <laughs> I asked one professor one time, so what did we actually get out of the moonshot? You know what his answer was? Velcro. Because, you know, when you're anti-gravity, everything's floating around. So they invented Velcro so that, you know, that things wouldn't float away. I said, well, you know, I don't know how many billions they spent to get Velcro. I mean, it's handy stuff, but, you know. So let's accept what they can do. So let's skip through this because I don't want to take up too much of your time. So these are those, those letters where Prabhupada gives the parameters of what you have to accomplish, what you have to be able to measure to compete with and replace modern speculative scientific view. So you can check this out later on. No, let's go. Let's just go next. Because we're running out of time. Keep going. Just keep, when I say go, go. I know it's, a, whoever's, is this Ambioto? Is this Ambioto running this? Who's our, oh, oh, it's Goro. I'm sorry, I forgot. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu. You've earned your prashadam today. So this is Mount Sumeru. You know, this is how all the plants, it's just mind-blowing. But there's a logic for it. And if you build, just like Bhagavad Gita, it builds you know, you start with the first chapter, you're not, and the second chapter, you're not, and it builds to, you know, Sarvadharma Pritya it, it builds, the knowledge builds. Bhagavatam, first canto, it builds all the way up to the tenth canto. So in the same way, this blows our mind, but if you actually go through it incrementally, it's profoundly logical. Next. So this is, all of this, this is explaining how it revolves. I think we better just keep going. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. I mean, you got the picture. Keep going. Because it takes too much time to go. So, Judah Karma could do this one time for you. Fulfill. So here's the downstairs. Go. What's next? Um, oh, this, that, we, that way we can go quickly through those. It explains Devi Dham. It's a Mahesh Dham. You know, it explains the, the, the 14 planetary systems. Just as you go up. When I was a kid, did you ever wonder... If I just got in a rock ship and kept going, what would happen? You ever think about that? Anyway, I did. 
That's why I joined the Hare Krishna movement. I got the answer. So you just keep going. You know, after, the, you know, you get to the Milky Way. I don't know how far they go. It's just space as far as you go, you know. I think so some theories is that it folds back in on itself. I mean, again, Sadaputta or Druda are your ones for that. But this will tell you. 14 planetary systems, you know, explains the hellish planets, middle planets, heavenly planets, Maheshtam, you know, the Vaikuntha, and goes all the way from Vaikuntha to Krishna Loka. That's in this display. After, after they've opened their head enough that they're, w wait a minute, everything I thought is true is just ridiculous. And then they're gradually being fed the logic for why to accept the Vedic view. Okay, and here is the Vedic view, and where do I fit in that? Your tiny spirit soul revolving on this wheel of samsara, and you're meant to get out of here, go home. Vishnu John Swami, chanting downtown. 1970. We had probably about 20 devotees, 20, 20 devotees on Harinam downtown. We used to chant in front of Bullock's. I don't know if it's still there, but it was a big department store. And also that was where the buses, city buses used to come in and out. It was a great place for chanting, but it was tough. Down the street was a, a, a coffee shop that, that alcoholics and prostitutes hung out. We're down there chanting because it, it was the center of downtown. That's where all the action was in those days. People would go to the top of Bullock's. It was a restaurant, outdoor restaurant on top. Get cups of hot coffee, put the styrofoam lid on it, and throw it off. You'd get hit with a big cup of hot coffee. Or it hit the ground and splatter all over you. So we had people bombarding us. We, had, we were left in these toxic bus fumes coming in and out, in and out, diesel fumes. We had the prostitutes coming down. Hey, hey, buddy. You know, <laughs> hey, I'm, a, I'm a brahmachari. Back off, you know. I mean, just imagine. And then to frost the cake on this particular day, a Christian marching band came in. Yeah, in uniforms, trombones, drums. When the saints come marching in. And here we are at Hari Nam trying to tell I was just like, what more can happen? Vishnu John Swami, who, you know, saintly, that, you know, just, he's out there and he was about six foot four. I mean, he was a solid, like a demigod. He was an amazing person. He's out there chanting, leading the kirtan. He would be out there for 10 hours, six hours, 10 hours, at a shot, and then go back in the evening for another five hours, you know? So all this stuff, you got the, coffee cups, you got the diesel fumes, you got the prostitutes, you got the drunks, you got the Christian marching band. Vishnu John is leaving Kirtan. And some guy goes by and says, hey, why don't you just go home? Vishnu John put his hands up and said, I'm trying, I'm trying. You know, back home, back to Godhead. So after seeing all of this, okay, get out of this world. You're not this body. You know, you know, they all stack up like dominoes. And you push the first one when they walk in the door. All the dominoes collapse. And at the end of the thing, there's Radha Madhava. And there's Goloka Vrindavan. And here's the five primary rasas. Sign me up. So I think there's more that we could say. I'll save it for Judah Karma or some other time. Because it is time. Um, but when you go out and distribute... That's what this movement is meant for. We have been given a mission by Srila Prabhupada, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the previous Acharyas. It is not simple. It is not easy. It is not small. But it's the only thing that matters. It is the only game in town. Where put our energy? Put our energy, like Prabhupada said, and change the world. It can be done. It is... Be I remember going out on Sankatan, book distribution. You'd hand him a book, you know, Raj Yoga. Yogurt? Hell, man, I don't eat yogurt. You know, karma, reincarnation, all these, these are in the modern lexicon. These are now embedded. Language is, a, is the, an expression of the consciousness of the society. Eskimos have so many words for snow because that's their experience. I think they have so many names for sand in Saudi Arabia. Those are simple examples, you know. The language is the sign of the cultural experience of the people. Now, karma, guru, mantra, kirtan, 
meditation. These are all in the language. When we go out and distribute books, they're primed. And why is it, why is it there? Vegetarian. Well, what the hell do you eat? We don't get that anymore. But they get, oh, I, I don't, I, you know, I still eat fish. You know, you get, you get arguments. And that's a, that's a good sign, you know. So, and they get it from the free prashadam booth at the Rathayatra. So, now what was I going to say? I was going to end with, oh, so just one other joke. This is the culture we were dealing with. Um, it's an old joke. A man is trying to explain to his dim-wit friend about reincarnation, transmigration of the soul. Right? Transmigration. Karma. And he says, you know, to his dim-wit friend, it's if you act piously, if you do good things, in your next life, you're born in an elevated state. And the guy says, oh, like Colorado? I mean, that's, that's what we were dealing with, you know? But the culture has changed. You know, we are like little ants. We only live a few years. But, I mean, to go from the age of faith to the age of enlightenment to the age of reason to the, you know, the economic, age, the industrial age to the age of disparity, I don't know what you call this age, oh, the computer age or whatever it is, you know? Those often take a couple hundred years. Hundred years, couple hundred years, whatever, you know? So in 50 plus, not even 60 years, all of those words have become embedded into the consciousness of the people. It is changing right before our eyes by book distribution, by festivals, by prashadam, by beautiful temples. It's happening. And in the same way we build this TOVP, it is going to be, a, it's going to be on the cover of every magazine you can imagine. People are going to, Prabhupada said, they will change the routing of planes flying out of India so they can fly over and see it. I mean, we've already got people. We've got Wall Street Journal with The Economist, U.S. World Today. When are you going to open? CNN. They're already asking, when are you going to open? We say, our answer, send money. So, <laughs> but you should understand that we are part of this changing the world. We're not meant for something small. Our life is meant to do something noble that benefits everyone. And we do it when we distribute books. Every book is a brick for Mayapur. And that is a fact. So we can, and we will change the world. Okay, we can end there. All right, Prabhu, thank you very much. Okay, but you, I, I can answer, but they can go. What's your question? Because the devotees want to take prasadam and no, but you can ask me. What's your question? Do you, do you mean like... Well, we're doing it in India. I don't need this. We're doing it in India because Chaitanya Prabhupada spoke in Gainesville, Florida at the university. 50,000 students and there's a whole city around it. Prabhupada starts his lecture. You can find that on Folio. Look for University of Florida. Prabhupada says, I'm speaking to you in this remote corner of the world, far from the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, ordinarily, you'd calculate that, you know, Mayapur is pretty remote and we were just getting started, you know, that little grass hut. So, you know, you would think Gainesville is pretty central and Mayapur is remote but Mayapur is, is, is the devas come to offer their respects so there's chakra there, 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 there's powerful shakti it's a holy dham it's the purest place of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu so everything's shifting everything's you know you think New York's important or this place is important actually Mayapur 
is going to become center of the cultural world. That's our long-term goal in a couple hundred years. Just like the, they, they've got Rome, they've got the Vatican, you know? Now, so as far as why, because we are dealing with spiritual energy and we're dealing with the Holy Dawn. We're not, we didn't get, get you know, well, maybe building it in Omaha would be better because the land's cheaper. It's none of that. Now, but are you talking about violence against us? What, what else are you talking about? Yeah, definitely there'll be a fight. Prophet said there's always the demons and the demon gods. It's always there. But because there's a fight, we should stay in a cave? Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. But let me tell you something. If you want to draw, draw a straight line, I may not be able to satisfy you, but I'm just telling you how I'm thinking. If you want to draw a straight line, freehand, you don't look this way or that. You look for the dot. You look where you're going, and you draw towards you're going. I have, and not that you don't. I mean, one thing we did was install Lord Nishringadev when they attacked and tried to steal Radhamadava because they thought Radharani was pure gold. They were going to melt down Radharani, the local Muslim decoits. They stole Radharani. It's a whole story. This one was bit by a cobra, this one was hit by a bus, this one drowned in the Ganga, and they gave her back. <laughs> Take her back, you know? So we did install Lord Nishringadev, Uber Nishringadev, who's being very nicely worshipped. So there's no question there's going to be attacks, there's going to be assaults, there's going to be criticism, there's going to be all kinds of stuff. The bigger, Prophet said it very clearly, the more our movement expands, the more people will attack us. Some people, other people will praise us. Prophet said as Kali Yuga progresses, it splits into two streams. There's a golden age that increases, but not everywhere and not for everyone. And the demons get more demonic. So it separates, Prophet said, like milk, you know, when you separate from the, from the paneer and, and, and the whey, it'll separate. So that's happening. So we have, and then after Prophet said, 5,000 years up, 5,000 year plateau for Chaitanya. And that's also in the sowing of the Purnamas. And then after that, the devotees ask Prophet, what happens after the 5,000 years up? 5,000 year plateau, and then the end of the golden age of Mahaprabhu, what happens? Prabhupada said, oh, you can see the fun. It just becomes dank Kali Yuga. Prabhupada said, all the devotees will be gone by then. We're off. And then comes Kalki at the end of the thing. So, we do, we follow the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and we depend on him and Lord Nishingit. And, you know, eventually we'll have to develop Military will have to develop so many. Well, who was talking yesterday? The, the, was it Swaru? I mean, not, but I don't want to get too far into all that. I just want to focus on that one point, drawing a straight line. Let us build the TOVP. Everything else will take care of itself. Somebody else can think about that. And they will think about it. I mean, they got to, somebody's thinking about what are you going to do for sewage with, with a low water table, and you're going to have 100,000 people. That's a problem. Doesn't mean we can't solve it. There's so many problems, you know. What about the Indian government becoming jealous and trying to take it over and make it a tourist place to grab money? So many things can happen. Therefore, we shouldn't do it. Yeah. No, that's a good question, but that's that's my answer. And as far as I'm a tiny jiva, I'm just going to try to raise money, distribute books, and build this thing and satisfy problems. I have faith. I'm not saying you don't, you know. And this is a good question. Okay, see you later, Prabhu. All right, Krishna. What's that? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It's a beautiful card. Yeah. It's 